Welcome to another Burgess News and Views. I'm your host, Don Burgess, and today we have the privilege of having the premier, David Burke, with us. Thank you for joining us. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to be here, although it's been a busy few weeks for everyone in the government review. And before I start, I just want to give a special uh, shout out to all of the health workers who are working on the front line. Um, especially the team of the Ministry of Health, who've been putting in hours and hours of fun, and lots of departments inside the government, Bermuda, the communications team, which has done a stellar job of putting out information, not only news, building new websites, and uh, putting out flyers and information uh, for persons, our teams at the airports, our teams at our other ports of entry. Um, it's been a tremendous effort, and um, they have certainly done the country proud with the work in which they're engaging, and I just want to publicly thank them before we you know, get started. Well, you did say information, so why don't we just go into misinformation. It seems like today's been worse than some other days with the rumors that have been going up about. Do you want to go ahead and address to the public about trying not to spread rumors? I mean, it's, it's, it's something that's particularly frustrating, and one of the biggest challenges about that is that um, when these rumors happen, uh, they actually take time and resources away from the work of preparing the country for this threat and persons have to then check to try to do things and then put out releases to refute. And this is energy that could be spent doing other things, making sure the country gets ready. So that's a particular challenge when it comes to rumors. Also, there's a rumor today uh, that our shipping lines are going to be disrupted. That is not the case. Uh, from uh, three weeks ago, when we uh, impaneled an even tighter group of persons, where we embodied the Ministry of National Security inside of the Public Health Emergency Response Team that was inside of the Ministry of Health, we were checking on food supplies and all these things to make sure that we were ready. So there is not the need uh, for some of the panic buying that which we're seeing. There is not the need uh, for all the rest. Our food, uh, our supply lines are uh, secure. Um, and we are not anticipating any disruption. And even if there was any disruption, there are contingency plans which are then put in place. And that is something that is tried and tested, which we do often. Yeah, I, I, I saw and heard stories from people like on Saturday, the, the, uh, the grocery shopping was crazy, worse than cut that sort of thing. So, as you're saying, you don't need, that's something that you don't have to really worry about. That, you know, the public can feel safe that there's going to be enough food here. Yeah, I mean, our shipping lines are uh, secure, um, and it is our intention to minimize any type, any mass spread. We've heard a lot of this thing, I know it's a cliche now, flatten the curve, right. but that is the public health approach to crises like this. And what we want to make sure is that recognizing that uh, COVID-19 is a coronavirus, coronaviruses are incredibly contagious, um, and the common cold is a coronavirus, and this is something that we've seen that is very contagious, and so we want to make sure that we can manage that so that our public health system is not overwhelmed. Uh, but the eventual, the eventuality is that there may be cases here. Um, closing down our borders does not stop the threat. Right. And the reason why it doesn't stop the threat is even if you close down the borders and you close down the entire country, the virus globally doesn't go away. So when you <laughs> open your borders back up, you have just the exact same risk that exists uh, for those particular issues. So we're working through this. Um, and if there are cases that are detected here, we'll move to another phase. Um, and there's a difference of whether or not the case is imported or if there's local transmission. But we have all of the uh, contingencies in place for if that happens. Well, I, you, you, on Sunday, we had the unusual move, well, I guess not this time for, for countries around the world, but unusual in the sense of, I think it's probably like the first time it's happened since mm -hmm. maybe World War II or 9-11, or I guess more recently, of uh, restricting travel into Bermuda in the sense of like if, uh, if you're going to be quarantined, mm -hmm. um, why on Sunday? It just seemed like all of a sudden it was the announcement was made and there's no... Well, I wouldn't, go, I wouldn't go so far as to say all of a sudden. When I gave a press conference on Friday, I, in, I told uh, persons that we were speaking to um, our counterparts in the United States, mm -hmm. United Kingdom, and that we were reviewing any possible uh, changes and that this situation was being reviewed and the further announcements that were made throughout the weekend. When you go ahead and put into place a plan like that, you have to make sure that you can support it uh, with the resources which were necessary. We met uh, here at the cabinet office early on Sunday morning where we were able to operationalize a plan, get everyone in order to make sure that it could actually happen. And then we made the announcement. 
the announcement was effective that we are going to add people to self-quarantine, um, but we wanted to give enough announcements so people could change any plans which they have because persons who will be arriving on the country from our first flight that comes in tomorrow morning will be required to self-quarantine and they'll be required to self-quarantine for 14 days. Unfortunately, that is effectively shutting down our borders to tourism because most people do not want to travel to a country and be stuck in their hotel room for 14 days or however long uh, they are here. So this is causing a challenge. Uh, there is a meeting of the uh, new, uh, newly impaneled COVID EMO, uh, which met earlier today, and we'll be using the assistance of the regiment to assist in making sure that self-quarantine is monitored and followed. But I have to stress, if you know someone who has traveled to the island, and who is under self-quarantine. It is a risk to the community if they break that quarantine. Sometimes COVID does not present with symptoms and in order for these persons to make sure they do not pose a risk in case they have been exposed, they must stay inside and follow the self-quarantine guidelines which they received upon arrival. Any type of deviation from that could put the community at risk could put vulnerable people at risk and could see persons in this country succumbing to this illness, which doesn't have to happen. So all of us have a role to play. So if you see something, you should Absolutely. And I mean, we're going to be stepping up not only the public monitoring, but we're also going to let neighbors know persons who have been quarantined so neighbors can assist in supporting. This is a group and community effort. The only way that you can address this threat is by everyone working together. You, you mentioned a little bit about the newly formed COVID, COVID mm -hmm. uh, EMO. Um, who's a part of this? Uh, the COVID EMO is uh, the chair is the Minister of National Security. Uh, the vice chair is the Minister of Health. Um, it's uh, staff, the senior uh, staffing person. It, the coordinator is the manager of the Disaster Risk Reduction and Mitigation Team, which is the one that uh, coordinates disaster uh, response and disaster recovery inside of the country. Uh, supported by the chief medical officer and uh, the uh, commissioner of police and then we'll have persons that are represented from the Vida hospitals board and other agencies of uh, the regiment uh, private sector uh, shipping etc uh, so there is about uh, 12 people on the coordinating board and they are the ones that are working through on a daily basis to make sure that we are prepared because we are ready to move to the next phase of this if there are cases of COVID here because they have to be rapidly tracked and we're following examples from other countries who have been successful in making sure that they control the spread of this particular virus. I guess one of the things to help control the spread are, are the tests. And there's still a lot of concern that we're having to send <coughs> the test overseas it's four or five days before we get the results. Uh, we, we keep hearing the tests are coming, they're on their way. Mm -hmm. Do we have a set date yet when those tests are going to be here? Um, I do know that certain testing kits did arrive on island today, uh, but there's a number of steps that have to go through in order for those things to be put into use. Um, I know that there's also um, a shipment that is coming from the World Health, uh, sorry, the Pan American Health Organization to set up additional test capacity here on island. Um, I have not had the latest updates, but I have every expectation that we'll be able to be conducting on island tests for those persons who need it. Well, by the end of the week, and I have every expectation that, that will be the reality. My target date is Thursday. A lot of people right now are really concerned about, you know, with the borders sort of being very restricted when people come here, about jobs, job security, um, making mortgage payments, making rent payments, uh, getting food on their table. Um, how is the government going to assist in that matter? Well, that is uh, certainly um, an important concern. And I know uh, that that's something that has been expressed um, in uh, the House of Assembly this morning um, and also the national address that I just gave. I remind the persons that the Minister of Finance today announced that he will be um, accessing a, um, will be creating a rescue package. Um, and this is to make sure that individuals, specifically persons inside of our uh, hospitality industry, who will be negatively impacted by uh, the uh, restrictions which have been put in place are able to be supported. So the government will be releasing details of the Minister of Labor, Community Affairs and Sports today, supported by the Chairman of the uh, National Workforce Development Board, went ahead and uh, drew up plans for
through a plan is for the unemployment assistance that is going to be made available. That's going to be made available through the Unemployment Insurance Fund, and the information on that will be going out from the government to those persons who are affected tomorrow. So we're ready to get that run. Because I understand that there were layoffs um, in hotels today. And we have to accept and understand it is, it, is a, it is a difficult balance, but we made the decision to effectively close our borders and to effectively shut down our tourism industry because of the fact that we want to do everything we can to minimize the spread. Right. And we've seen countries that have delayed their actions and seen the trouble of which the delayed actions have caused. We do not want our public health system to be overwhelmed. Uh, there, uh, this thing does cause uh, pneumonia in certain cases and instances. It's serious pneumonia, especially in those persons that are in vulnerable populations, and we do not want that happening here. So even though the hospital had ordered, has ordered more ventilators, even though the hospital is ready to receive and have all their treatment rooms and isolation protocols and additional supplies, we don't ever want to get to the point where they're going to come even close to that. Right. We want to do our best to contain this threat, and we believe the steps in which we've taken thus far are working in order to contain it. That, that way the doctors don't have to make those kind of decisions with all the ventilators are working. Absolutely. Uh, I, I really appreciate your, your time. Um, one last uh, word that you want to give of encouragement to the Bermudian people going through. I know we've gone through hurricanes before, and I've had a lot of people express to me how this sort of, you know, that feeling before a hurricane where you're just waiting for it to come. What would you say to the Canadian public about keeping their chin up and uh, sticking together? What I would say is that it's the only way that we're going to get through this is by sticking together. And I think that it's very important that, number one, we listen to the official information and follow on the official information and guidelines which is coming from the government. If you're in self-quarantine, stay in self-quarantine. If you know persons that are in self-quarantine, help to support them that are in self-quarantine. Making sure there is no need to panic you can remain calm and you can trust the information that will come from the government Bermuda. We are relying on science. We are relying on making sure that, um, that the best protocols are being followed. And unlike other countries, the, the citizens of this country can rest assured that the government of Bermuda has taken this threat seriously from the beginning. That is the reason why we are prepared to respond in any way, shape, or form necessary, and we're going to continue on our aspect of preparation, but it's going to require all of us to do so. Before I close, I know there is some concern about public schools. Right. The fact is that until there is, um, we move to the next step, there will not be any decision to close our schools. And that is relying on advice that has come from the Centers for Disease Control. This is all about flattening the curve. And it shows that actually closing schools early does not necessarily impact that where we want it to be impacted. And it can also cause additional disruption. So from our perspective, we're trying to make sure that we are very prudent. And we're doing this in the way that science has said is the best way to handle this. I believe in science. And I have been following the science. And I'm not necessarily going on other items and I think that collectively if we keep that sense and collectively if we listen and help each other, I think that we will be fine and we will survive this. Uh, uh, sorry, I know we're, mm -hmm. we're short on time, but uh, part of the thing with the school decision is like, you, there's, I, uh, heard like there's some concern about just telling parents tomorrow your kids mm -hmm. won't be going to school, you've got to find their own mm -hmm. care for them. How much of a part of your decision is that? Well, that's, that's, not, that's not a part of the decision. The fact is that we will make decisions in the base of public safety. If we get to a situation in Bermuda where there is local transmission that cannot be detected, we will immediately take the decision to close schools and to close government offices, etc. Because the research has shown that in that case, you have to act very swiftly in order to contain that transmission. But we are not at that point yet. So the fact is, there are different types of cases. So there can be imported cases where the person has come in, where the person has been quarantined, where the person has been isolated, and you can trace any of their contacts, or other cases. So as I'm saying, it all depends on how this presents. But the government will not waste any time in the case that there is local transmission. We will take the steps that are necessary if that point comes, but we are looking to manage this effectively and to follow science. So our decision is not based upon it may inconvenience parents, but there is some advice that saying if you 
quarantine schools, and if you if you shut schools, and if you do have community transmission, then the people who are most likely to take care of those persons are senior citizens who are right. more exposed. And so there's lots of varying advice on this, but until there is community transmission, there will not be a decision in which to close schools and or government offices. I did have a phone call today with all the principals of the private schools to express my concern. They can make their own decisions and they've all individually made separate decisions on what they're going to do. But I want everyone to remember, just because someone has a fever and just because someone may um, be coughing does not mean that they have COVID-19. It is flu season and most of the persons who were tested for COVID-19 were sent away, their test results came back negative for COVID-19, but also were able to test them here locally and they came back positive for influenza. It is flu season as well, so persons should keep that in mind. We are making sure that we are very prudent, we are taking into account what the advice is, and I'm confident that we will be able to make it through this particular phase. Thank you for your for your time this evening. No problem. And, uh, and, and thank you for your daily updates, even the positive and negative. I enjoy reading them when they get sent to me. You're welcome. And thank you for Bernie's to keeping uh, the people of Bermuda informed with reliable um, news information. So I'm your host, Tom Burgess. I'm here with the Premier of Bermuda, David Burt, reminding you, first of all, wash your hands. If you're sick, stay home. Don't go to school. Don't go to work. Uh, cover your mouth when you cough with your with a tissue preferably or your elbow if you, if you don't have a tissue handy let's keep everybody safe mm -hmm. have a beautiful evening Thank you. Thank you.